ladies uh, and gentlemen, our uh, last presenter is uh, Martin Zaumanis. Uh, he's actually, since a few months, uh, working for EMPA in Switzerland. Uh, previously, he got his uh, PhD at uh, Worcester. University was working for many years uh, in Riga for the Technical University, and uh, I know Martin for uh, a few years, and I know that he's dealing with uh, questions related to 100% reuse of uh, asphalt in in our pavement. So uh, that's exactly what he's presenting to us uh, today. So Martin, please. Thank you, Jan. Uh, so yeah, this uh, is going to be the summary of my doctoral thesis that I did in the Wooster Polytechnic Institute and my advisors were Rajib Malik and also I got a lot of help from Robert Frank. Uh, 50 million tons of recycled uh, of reclaimed asphalt are available in Europe according to Yapa asphalt in figures, but I come from a small country so I have uh, a little bit of trouble of uh, grasping these uh, large numbers. So I thought I would express them uh, in the units of Great Pyramids of Giza. And it turns out that the volume uh, corresponds to about eight Great Pyramids of Giza. Uh, from that, 91% is recycled, which is around uh, seven uh, and a little bit uh, Great Pyramids of Giza. And this is a very good number. Actually, uh, we can be proud that our material is one of the most recycled in the world. But only 52% are actually reused into asphalt applications. So clearly, there's a room for improvement there. And uh, I kind of summarized and the reasons why we have such a relatively lower reuse rate in, uh, in four main aspects. Uh, so first off, we need to make sure that the materials that we are using, uh, they can be traced, uh, they, can be, uh, they have been tested for their properties, they have to be homogeneous so that we would be able to uh, do a proper mix design. Second, we need the proper technology for uh, the production plants, we need to use uh, new asphalt plants. We cannot expect to produce uh, Ferraris in a beetle plant. Uh, next, we need a mix design method for high wrap mixes and, of course, including 100% recycled mixes. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. And uh, finally, we need uh, to change the mindset of the people involved. And our keynote speech already uh, uh, summarized a lot, lot of these aspects. And, and like probably some of you are thinking now, uh, why is this guy talking about 100% recycling if we have not yet uh, figured out 30%? You know, outside of this uh, auditorium, there are many people, especially in the, uh, in, in the road authorities, that are thinking the same thing about 30% recycling. They want to keep it safe. But okay, that's more about politics. I will focus on the technology and the mix design part uh, for high wrap recycling. And just to show that I'm not the only one thinking about 100% recycling, uh, there are many producers who have uh, tried to design asphalt plants that are... Uh, um, that can produce 100% recycled mixture. And uh, we also got a very nice presentation on that yesterday. I was actually involved in one such uh, project in New York City where we uh, designed and, and tested mixtures that were later uh, applied in New York City streets. And here you see a 100% recycled asphalt mixture uh, applied, uh, put down in, the, in a parking lot. And later, based on, on the research and, and uh, some uh, trials in the New York City streets, uh, starting the uh, previous year, actually 100% recycled uh, asphalt is allowed on, in the streets of New York City. But uh, I actually feel that we, as uh, researchers, might be a little bit behind the uh, plant producers, plant designers. Uh, the plants are already kind of almost there for routine production of uh, very high uh, content uh, wrap mixtures, but the mix design might actually uh, not be there. Um, so. Even by default, there are some differences between, uh, between uh, the conventional mix design and the high wrap design. So we have to test the uh, properties of the 
um, wrap itself. We have to extract the binder. We have to figure out how to rejuvenate it, what dosage, what type of rejuvenate or virgin uh, binder we have to use. Then we need to test the volumetric properties, and uh, I'm not totally convinced that uh, those should be the same as are used for conventional mixes. And finally, we have to use performance tests to really ensure that the uh, performance will be uh, what, it, what we expect from an asphalt pavement. So we have to balance the, uh, the high temperature, the rutting properties with the cracking performance. And one way to think about it is uh, uh, with my superhero, Bitumen. So uh, he has to follow a very strict diet. He has to have his optimum performance. Otherwise, he will crack in winter. and uh, if we overdose with the rejuvenator or we have a, a, a fat mixture, he will uh, start to melt in summer. So bitumen's diet has to be optimized. And uh, I, here's just an example of how we did it uh, in uh, my uh, research. Uh, so uh, we had the wrap that we extracted the binder. It had a penetration of about uh, 20. And we added six different rejuvenators. I'll not go into details with that. But uh, each of them we applied in two different dosages. And uh, there was clearly an exponential relationship. So we could potentially easily calculate the optimum dosage. Uh, as an example here, uh, we had uh, um, a virgin binder of penetration 78. So we easily can calculate what's the optimum uh, dosage for uh, reaching that uh, for, for a particular rejuvenator. Another way to do it would be according to performance grade specification. And, uh, and if you're not familiar with that, uh, the performance grade um, sets a certain um, parameter requirement, and then you measure the temperature at which you can reach, uh, reach this per parameter. And each area has a, a set temperature that you have to uh, fulfill. So uh, we calculated for each of the um, different rejuvenators the dosage that is required to reach the uh, high PG, uh, high performance grade temperature. And anything, any dosage that's below that will ensure that our um, binder is rut resistant. And on the opposite side, we have the minimum uh, required dosage that will ensure that it is uh, crack resistant at low temperatures. And there's also an intermediate uh, kind of fatigue param parameter. And in some cases, uh, this was the main uh, constraint. So what's interesting is that the penetration that I showed you earlier, in all the cases, was the optimum dosage, uh, according to penetration, was always somewhere in between this maximum and minimum dosage. So we can say that if we would optimize the mix according to penetration, we would also uh, ensure the um, performance grade uh, specification uh, requirements. The problem is that all of this only talks about the binder. It artificially assumes that there is 100% blending of uh, binder in the mixture. And we know uh, by fact that that is uh, not true. There is some black rock situation. There is some layered system around the wrapped stones. So we should test the performance properties, like I said earlier. And that's what we did in my research as well. Uh, we had a, a 9.5 millimeter super pie mix, and I'll not go into details. Uh, the main thing is that we had 12% uh, of rejuvenator of each of these six rejuvenators, and we tried to keep all the uh, volumetric uh, co parameters constant. So first, we tested the rutting performance. You can see the wrap mix. Uh, that's uh, according to wheel tracking test device. The wrap mix uh, has a very high rut resistance, as we would expect from a stiff mixture. The virgin mix is, uh, uh, doesn't perform as well. Actually, it fails the minimum rutting requirement. And our rejuvenated mixes were somewhere in between. Well, that's the easy part, because we are all familiar with the rutting test. The problem is that we need a cracking test that we can really rely on. And I'm not just saying that this is the cracking test to use, but this, is the, this was the approach that we tried out. Uh, basically, we tested the creep compliance at three different low temperatures and came up with this stress uh, temperature curve. And then we tested the uh, indirect tensile strength. Uh, and with some calculations, we came, with the, came up with a, uh, with a temperature where the thermal stress exceeds the thermal strength of the mixture, and that's the uh, critical cracking temperature. 
So this is the result for our uh, six mixtures. And uh, you can see that Vision mixture uh, has a cracking temperature of minus 22. Um, our wrap mix without any rejuvenator has a minus 13. And if we compare to that, um, most of the rejuvenators did in fact uh, improve it or lower the cracking temperature. And you see some discrepancy there uh, between the different types of rejuvenator. So what I'm trying to say is we need to come up with a method to balance the uh, high temperature performance and the cracking performance uh, on whatever that is, is either uh, fatigue or, or low temperature cracking that's uh, the most pronounced in the region um, uh, of concern. So thank you very much. Um, please feel free to contact me anytime. And uh, if uh, you want to hear more about the adventure of bitumen, uh, then my TED presentation uh, was uh, released recently. Uh, thank you very much. So Martin, thank you very much.